Voter fraud? What? You mean that crazy right-wing conspiracy? Ha ha ha! Hillary won the popular vote. Boo, Trump. No, it isn't actually, but I can understand why you'd be so quick to defend it considering how much it benefits your party. John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Howdy there, partners. That's how you say hello to townsfolk in the Wild West and um, also to couples at a gay wedding. But uh, anyways, welcome to Heck Off Kami. If you're new here, please subscribe to my channel down below because if you don't, you could miss out on the next video that I do and I might do something cool like a backflip. Uh, so you aren't going to want to miss out on that. So voter fraud, that's the big conspiracy that the Republicans promote because we keep losing elections, right? Against six... Not so much, but nonetheless, voter fraud is a very real issue and it's a very real problem because it's a direct threat to our republic, not our democracy. I'll never understand why Obama and Hillary always describe America as a democracy. And I honestly think that it's because democracies are much easier to corrupt than republics are because in a total democracy, the vote of a low aptitude individual counts as equivalent to the vote of someone with high aptitude. So what happens? The low aptitude person, they vote and they take more resources away from the person with high aptitude through the creation and expansion of a welfare state, which is actually what we're seeing happen in this country right about now because as it would turn out our elected officials have become much more concerned about maintaining their status and power than protecting and upholding the well-being of our country like you know they swore to do and no this isn't a tangent this is actually pertinent to what we're going to talk about today so just bear with me um the way that this is pertinent is essentially that the left openly calls for expansions to social security and for us to implement a much more lenient immigration system, something that's quite close to open borders in practice, but a lot of them have actually begun to flirt with open borders as part of their platform, so it's only a matter of time before they, um, they make that update. So here's why this is relevant. You can't have open borders and a welfare state. When you have those things, country goes bye-bye, and they say, oh, well, we're a nation of immigrants. Okay, firstly, that's not a strong argument in the way that you think it applies here. So the bottom line without getting too deep with it is that the immigrants that came to this country during the late 19th and early 20th centuries, one third of them went back to their home countries. I've seen figures as high as half, but I'll be conservative with it. So why did they go back to their home countries? Because they were poor and they needed money. So they came to America, worked, saved up, took some money, went back home with it and invested in the life that they had already built in their home country. They weren't coming to America to become a part of the welfare state that didn't even exist yet. The same can't be said now since a majority of illegal immigrants come to America and get onto the welfare state, onto the welfare benefits. A large amount of legal immigrants too, too. So yeah, it isn't that they want to come, work hard and leave. It's they want to come, get on welfare and then I mean, yeah, yeah, that's basically it as far as I can tell. So what do the Democrats do from here? They advocate for more social security and for lax or immigration policies. What do the illegals do? They vote for the Democrats to keep getting their benefits. I mean, it's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. These people are in the process of sacrificing the entire country just to maintain power because once it gets to a certain point, there isn't any going back. You try explaining to a guy with an IQ of 85 that, well, you know, the country might be a bit better if you stop collecting that welfare check and got a job. It isn't happening. And the left certainly isn't going to stop this onslaught anytime soon because as far as they're concerned they found their golden ticket and they're absolutely right about that and you think you've got me you're like well John that may be true but undocumented immigrants can't vote because it's illegal got me shows over pack it up boys yeah, you know what else is illegal? Being in this country illegally, you doorknob. And you think, well, yeah, but there isn't even a way for them to register to vote in the first place, which isn't true, and I'll explain why, but this is another thing. This is why the left is so against voter ID laws. And they say, Republicans are trying to make it harder for minorities to vote by implementing laws requiring IDs. Liberals are actually so racist. Can you imagine that in like any other context? Like, hey, Andre, I was gonna go work on our biology project, but I know that you're a minority, so you probably don't know how to do it. So it's all good, man, no worries. The bigotry of low expectations, I think it's called. Um, anyways, the reason that they don't like voter ID laws is because minorities are less likely to have eligible IDs than whites are, and minorities vote overwhelmingly for Democrats. So they need the laws to be lax so that they can continue to get those votes. And to be fair, Republicans are probably against the abolition of those laws in part because of that. But I really think that at its core, it's about us wanting to know who's voting in our elections. And they like to call it voter suppression as if it's the same as those literacy tests that the Democrats designed back in the days of Jim Crow to keep blacks from voting. But it isn't. It's totally possible to get a state ID. It's, <laughs> it's literally four steps. You need your social security number on some document, certified birth certificate, which can be easily obtained if you don't have the original, some other form of ID, and then a document that proves that you reside in the state in which you claim residence. That's why I laugh when they say, it's easier to get a gun than an ID in this country. Like, you need an ID to get the gun. So 
it doesn't really make sense. So how exactly does this happen? Let's go over some of those details. 17 states require no photo ID to vote at the precinct. States like New Mexico, Nevada, California. California, by the way, has 11 counties with more voters registered to vote than eligible voters residing in the county. Like you can't make this stuff up. And before I get called out for being ignorant of the actual process, let me just clarify, just because the states don't require a picture ID doesn't mean you can just walk in there and vote, no questions asked. You still have to be registered to vote. According to Pew, 2.75 million people are still registered to vote in multiple states and 1.8 million deceased people are still registered to vote. Do you see how that could be a problem with no required ID in 17 states or another 14 states with very lenient ID laws, which basically means they accept non-photo IDs, but also photo IDs too. In fact, there are only 20 states that have relatively strict photo ID laws, and even 10 of those will let you use something else if you cannot obtain a photo ID. So yeah, it could be argued that the system is going to implode on itself like a collapsing star. Over a thousand cases in just this one database, and that's just of July 2017. How often exactly does this happen though? A 2013 survey of 800 likely Hispanic voters discovered that 13% of them admitted that they were non-citizens. In 2014, a study released by a team of professors from Old Dominion University and George Mason University estimated that approximately 6.4% of non-citizens voted in the 2008 presidential election. They also surmised that 2.2% voted in the 2010 midterm election. In addition, the study estimated that 80% of non-citizens who appeared to have voted cast their ballots in favor of one party. Guess which one? Non-citizens are believed to have voted in these elections in numbers great enough to have affected the outcome. Nate Silver, an acclaimed statistician with the forecasting firm 538, calculated that states with newly implemented voter ID laws will experience a turnout decrease by as much as 2.4% of the registered voter population. Opponents of voter ID laws claim that any decrease in voter turnout are evidence that legal voters have been disenfranchised, discounting the possibility that reductions might be due to the decreased participation by non-citizens. But as Silver has noted, this argument doesn't make sense because the vast majority of adults in America hold some form of photo identification, and states with voter ID laws offer qualifying documentation at minimal or no cost. While it's impossible to prove that Silver's entire 2.4% estimated turnout decrease is entirely attributable to non-citizen voters, it's highly likely that foreign nationals without authorization to vote will constitute the majority of this group. I thought you guys didn't like it when foreign nationals interfered with elections. Hmm. And Silver's numbers are consistent with the results of other studies, more specifically focused on reducing unlawful non-citizen voting. If we take the mean of these three estimates, 7.25%, and apply it to just the 22 million non-citizen residents currently in the United States, then approximately 1.6 million non-citizens vote every year. According to the high and low estimates here, that number could be as high as 2.9 million at 13% of 22 million, or as low as 528,000 at 2.4% of 22 million. To put that in perspective, about 107,000 votes effectively decided the 2016 election. Now, in Florida and in other states, we're seeing the Democrats demand that we must count every vote, we must count the provisional ballots, and then the low information citizen goes, Oh yeah, that sounds fair. Those darn Republicans always trying to suppress the votes, even though by definition, provisional ballots are ballots that were filled out by people that had questions circulating whether or not they were actually eligible to vote. And we've seen a lot of weird things surrounding these ballots, like where they've been discovered and who discovered them, how they're being transported. And it's funny because the left is saying, notice how when we count more ballots, the Democrats get more votes. Huh, yeah, you could almost argue that that's by design. <laughs> like in 2016, Trump actually gained votes in the recount, which was funny. So yeah, there's a lot of weird details going on with those ballots. I'm not going to make any assertions about what's going on because I really don't know. Uh, I'm just mentioning my observations. Another observation, um, typically when a party calls for a recount, that's political talk for I need more votes. Democrats always need more votes. They just aren't good at winning elections because their party is toxic. So yeah, new strategy, just import more voters. Let anyone vote. Who cares? It's just a country. I care. I hope you care. You should. Who votes decides what happens in this country because now our elected officials, particularly on the left, are more concerned about appeasing the fiscally implausible demands of their voters at the expense of you, the taxpayer, and even more so at the expense of you, the future taxpayer. Yeah, that's right. That debt is our burden. Thanks, boomers, because, you know, they want to stay in power. This isn't, by the way, an argument to suppress the vote. This is just me wanting the people who are supposed to vote to vote and then the people who aren't supposed to vote to not vote. Because, typically, the people who aren't supposed to vote are going to benefit more and suffer less from the policies that they are voting in favor of. We need to care about this and we need to be vigilant because we literally cannot afford for this to continue. 
ha, you thought I was done, but I'm not. I'm like Hillary Clinton, like when you least expect it, I just come back. Um, I want to start doing a segment where I answer your guys' questions that you might have for me. So go ahead and shoot me an email at officialcomradedoyle at gmail.com. Put question in the subject bar. Uh, it's for a new segment that I'm going to start doing once a month. So yeah, I want to start interacting more with you guys and talking about things that you might want to see me talk about rather than just stuff that I decide that, oh yeah, I want to talk about this. So yeah, I'd love to get that feedback from you. So yeah, just shoot me an email and I'll definitely get to it. Hey guys, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. There's a picture of me down there to click on. Help you do that. Leave me a thumbs up and a comment. And if you want to talk to me about this stuff or talk to other like-minded people, there's a link in the description for conservativepoliticalforum.com. It's a great group. Thank you so much for watching as always, and may God bless America.